All right, what's up, everybody? It's been uh. So obviously, I've been hard at work all this time to make the case. Yeah, no, not really. Here in college, we have these fun little things called exams every once in a while. Some classes will have two exams and then a final per semester, and some classes will have three exams and a final. And let me tell you, the difference between two and three has never been greater. Because once you have a single class with a triple exam set up, boy, it really is an exam every other week, and it's hard to sit down and work on a big project. And yes, less exams means more content per exam. But you can think about it this way. Would you rather fart every minute or shart your pants once a month? Let's talk about some updates and changes since my last keyboard video. I've been getting fan mail from Manson. Hope you are doing great. Recently May we have analyzed have and have finished, finished your research on your project. Did Wish you have a waiting order. order? And a new quote for microchips. Woohoo! The price drop from $20 to $10 is surely a celebratory event if it weren't for them being back in stock for $5. Or I don't know, not $26 of shipping fees and another $4 fee for paying money. In other news, the unified daughter board I'm using created by AIO3 and several other notable people has gone from version 3 to version 4 and changed, um, the cable type. What am I going to do with these? Also, like at least 250 of y'all bothered to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications and smash that. People are still asking me questions about how I did so and so on my PCB. Bro, I don't even know what PCB stands for anymore. Like, huh? like stop asking. Okay, jokes aside, you can ask me questions, but just don't expect me to know the answers. You stupid. All right, keyboard time. We have a couple options for what our case can be made of, like plastic, wood, and metal. I could easily simplify this process by just stacking some laser cut acrylic or even just 3D printing my case. But that's lame, so we're not doing that. Aluminum is pretty much the standard for all premium custom keyboards these days. As for the plate, our options are FR4, which is what PCBs are made of, carbon fiber, aluminum, brass, polyoxymethylene, or palm, and polycarbonate plastic, or PC. Here's the current plan. The top and bottom case are going to be made from 6061 aluminum alloy, held together by magnets. They'll be sandblasted to have that smooth, consistent finish, and then powder coated. I know the popular choice here is anodization, but anodization is literally dunking metal into acid while running electricity through it. That's already kind of a stretch to do on my own since I'm not trying to outsource any manufacturing I don't have to, which is ideally only the PCB. The plate will also be made out of 6061 aluminum, and it will be mounted to the case with pour-on foam in a gasket mount style. Gasket mount is when the PCB or plate is fixed to the case through friction fit rather than mechanical screws, using flexible or squishy materials. This tends to produce a more comfortable typing experience, and in some extreme cases, can result in a very bouncy keyboard. I also plan to have a stainless steel weight made from 304 alloy, mirror finished and wax coated. The weight will be mounted with M3 screws. Next we have foam, which will be made from polyurethane foam. Last but not least, the daughter board I have been continuously mentioning will be the C3 version of the unified daughter board, since I already have one. The purpose of a daughter board is to host the USB port rather than the PCB, so the PCB can freely move in gasket mount rather than be held down by the USB port. By design, it will be mounted by M2 screws. As it turns out, metal is not exactly the easiest material to work with. To get a shape that I want, I have to use a process called subtractive manufacturing, where you start with a block of metal and then literally subtract what you don't want from it by spinning different sized blades at like 250 rotations per second. This can be done either through traditional machining with manual mills and lathes, or CNC, which stands for Computer Numerical Control, to perform precise cutting operations from code. And these things cost holy moly. Where in the world am I gonna find one of those? Oh, hey.
Safety first, kids. Trained personnel? Yeah, that's me. Oh my god, bro. Alright, let's go. How do you how do you use these things? To design the keyboard, we are going to need to use CAD, which stands for Computer Aided Design. CAD is the process of using computer software to create 3D models. To actually manufacture the keyboard and progress it past a geek hack interest check render, we are going to need to use CAM, which stands for Computer Aided Manufacturing. CAM is the process of using computer software to generate tool paths for CNC machines. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. Okay, I know what you're thinking. This is the most default looking ass keyboard you've ever seen. Hear me out. Sometimes it's better to start with the basics so you can actually get something done.
you're probably wondering what the bottom looks like. Also, I ran out of time to make the weight, so there's just this gaping cavity. Have you ever seen keyboard manufacturers sell keyboard cases as A stock and B stock based on the quality of the board? Well, this thing isn't even C stock, it's F stock. It turns out that machining things isn't that straightforward, and machining something well is a whole other beast. A blade spinning at thousands of rotations per minute exerts a ton of force on the metal block it's cutting. Machining a part requires good work holding, which is what holds the part in place. A poor work holding or thinner materials can result in chattering, which is an unwanted resonant vibration. Chattering tends to create a very bad machine finish, and while I could have sanded it away, if I did that, you wouldn't be watching this video right now, and I would still be sanding. An occurrence of chattering doesn't necessarily mean a part is impossible to machine, it usually means there's a better technique or approach to manufacturing that part. A poor work holding can also result in issues with parallelism, which is when features that are made in two different work holdings are not correctly oriented with respect to each other. Another big issue is with the consistency of the powder coat. Powder coating works by spraying a dry powder onto an electrically charged surface and then baking the part at around 400 degrees Fahrenheit for a few minutes. While powder coats can definitely yield some amazing results, it's difficult to tell how the powder coat will turn out before it's baked. Anodization is definitely a superior finishing method in many ways, including its ability to preserve the original surface texture, unlike a powder coat, which introduces a new thin surface. Not that it's a big deal though, since anodizing a prototype is sort of unnecessary. Oh yeah, also this thing barely flexes since my mounting method was pretty terrible, but it's enough to know it's gasket mount when you type on it. You can see that it doesn't really move when typing, but is not completely stiff. If you were to take any close look at this keyboard, it would drive you nuts, because it's just imperfect in so many ways. It's not something I would ever want to buy from someone, or even sell. Yet, it's my keyboard to use forever and it marks a historic first step for me. I've learned countless new things, which I'll be using to create better keyboards. This is not the end of the keyboard series and you can expect more to come in the future.